Parables from nature. A parable. What is it? Well, it's a little story with a lot of truth in it. An earthly story with a heavenly meaning. The story you're about to be told reminds us of a parable that Jesus told. A parable that teaches us a very special lesson about God. Silly excuses. Our story about silly excuses begins with three members of the Treeland Little League baseball team. It was the last game of the season. This is Bobby Badger, the star pitcher for the Treeland baseball team. Bobby Badger's best friends, Pat and Perry Possum, also played on the team. The three of them did everything together. They were in the same class at school, and of course they played baseball every day. Bobby Badger's team won the game, and everyone in Treeland said they deserved it. Afterward, Bobby went over to shake hands with Barney Beaver, the captain of the Brookside team. Pat and Perry Possum went along with him. Good game, Barney. I wish it weren't our last, though. I do, too. Say, why don't the three of you come down to the pond with me next Saturday? I've got a new sailboat, and I'll take you for a ride. How about that? Would you like to go sailing next Saturday? Sure. Yeah, sure. Oh, oh, boy. Come on. Let's go. But on the way to the locker room, Bobby remembered something else they had promised to do on Saturday. Hey, Saturday's the Woodscott picnic. We've already signed up to go, and we're on the refreshments committee, too. They're expecting us to show up. Oh, no! They were still wondering what to do about it when Perry Possum said, Oh, who cares about no picnic? We can do that anytime. But we've never been sailing, and this is our only chance before school starts. I know. Why don't we each make up some kind of an excuse? They won't miss us that much. The very next day, Bobby went to Mr. Tanager because he wanted to send his silly excuse by air. Uh, Mr. Tanager, I've broken my glasses and I can't go to the scout picnic on Saturday. So, would you please fly over to Fern Hollow and tell Mr. Porcupine, our scoutmaster? Sure, Bobby. Oh, that's too bad. I'll give him your message right away. Meanwhile, Pat and Perry Possum had made up their silly excuse and were just thinking about how to send it to Mr. Porcupine when Bushy the Squirrel happened by. Bushy, hey, Bushy, wait a minute. We need your help. Oh, we want to ask you a favor, kid. What's the matter with your voice? Perry and I have caught awful colds, and I don't think we can make it to Saturday's Wood Scout picnic. Would you tell Mr. Porcupine for us? As their messages were being delivered, Bobby, Pat, and Perry went to sleep, pleased with the thought that on Saturday, they would have more fun sailing with Barney Beaver than going to the scout picnic as they had promised to do. But were they in for a surprise? When Saturday arrived, all the other wood scouts met at the big oak tree for what they thought was to be a picnic. But Mr. Porcupine had a big smile on his face. He looked like he was about to share some very good news with the Wood Scouts. And he did. Scouts, there's been a little change in our plans. Instead of a picnic, we're all going to the fairgrounds in the meadow. I've got tickets for all of us to see a big league exhibition game between the Black Bears and our own Grizzlies, who, as you know, just won this year's league championship. <laughs> What a surprise! Some of the scouts had never seen a big league game before, and they were very excited. Now, there's just one more thing. Three of our scouts, Bobby Badger and Pat and Perry Possum, will not be able to go with us today, and so I have three extra tickets. Any ideas as to what I should do with them? I know. Around the gate at the field, there are always some little field flyers who'd like to see the game but they can't afford a ticket. Let's invite the three of them to go with us. Well, that's a fine idea. Yeah, we'll do that. Sure.
sure enough, there were three little field mice who were very happy to have a chance to see a big league game. It was all very exciting. The game was a close one, and to everybody's delight, the Treeland Grizzlies won. With the final strikeout, the crowd went wild. After the game, the scouts met the winning pitcher, and everybody wanted to shake his hand and get his autograph. And a photographer from the Treeland News even took a picture of the field mice along with the pitcher. Everybody had a wonderful time, and the scouts were glad they had made the little field mice so very happy. Hey, thanks a lot. Thank you. And what happened to the scouts who made up those silly excuses? Well, they did go sailing with Barney Beaver, but they hadn't gone far when... A gust of wind suddenly hit their boat, and all four were thrown into the pond. Luckily, they weren't far from shore, and were able to hang on to the overturned boat until Tom Turtle happened along. Help, Tom! Help! Toss back to shore, Tom, will ya? As they were being towed back to shore, all three sat shivering on the overturned boat, when suddenly Bobby Badger discovered that he had lost his glasses. They had fallen into the water when the boat tipped over. That night, the possums were put to bed early, hanging by their tails. That's the way possums sleep, you know. When Mr. Porcupine, the scoutmaster, called to ask how the boys were feeling, he told Mrs. Possum all about the big league ball game and how sorry he was that Pat and Perry had missed it. What's that, Mr. Porcupine? The scouts didn't go on the picnic? You took them to see a big league baseball game instead? And they met the grizzly star pitcher? Oh, they'll be so disappointed. Pat and Perry were, indeed, very disappointed and ashamed of themselves. The next morning, Bobby, Pat, and Perry saw the story in the Treeland News and wondered how the field mice had gotten their picture taken with the winning pitcher. As they read the story, Perry said, Look, it says three of the scouts in Mr. Porcupine's troop were unable to go to the game and their tickets were given to the field mice. If only we had done what we had promised to do, we'd have been so much better off. This story is very much like one that Jesus told about a man who gave a great banquet. He invited a large number of people. But when the day arrived, everyone began to make excuses. One man said to his servant, Go and say that I have just bought a new field and must attend to it. Another man said that he had just bought five teams of oxen and had to put them to work on his land. The servant of another came to say that his master had important duties at home and could not leave. Then the host, realizing that his friend simply did not want to come, became very angry and told his servant to go quickly into the streets of the city and invite the poor, the blind, and the lame to come and sit at his table. So every seat at the banquet was filled, and everyone who came was very grateful for the bountiful meal and those who had refused to come never knew what they had missed. By this parable, Jesus is saying that those who do not want to listen to God will always find some excuse to keep from doing so. But those who do listen to God will be greatly rewarded. <laughs>